We both have limb differences and we're both Paralympic athletes. I contracted meningitis when I was three years old. I was only given 2% chance of survival and they had to amputate both of my legs to save my life. And it's pretty much a, a miracle that I'm here today. I was born without my left forearm. When I was younger, I was picked on and I was often called a monster. People saying that you'll never be able to do this or that you look strange. I was just so determined to be able to prove all the, the haters wrong. We live here in Clarglen, as you can see around you with the mountains and everything, it's fantastic. It's a very nice town, it's quiet. What's up everybody? <laughs> Maybe don't <laughs> groan. My name's Maddie and I'm a member of the Canadian Paralympic track and field team and I compete in the event of long jump. My name is Jordan and I'm an athlete on the Irish Paralympic team that specialises in the sport of high jump. Back in 2019, we were both at the World Championships in Dubai. I was on Team Canada, obviously, and then Jordan was on Team Ireland. She pretty much slid into my DMs, if I'm being honest. Paralympics actually reposted my post, and um, she followed me through that post, then sent me a message asking if I was going to be at the track. And she walked up to me in front of the entire Irish Paralympic team <laughs> at the track, which uh, took a lot of nerve. To tell you the truth, I went over to Dubai to win a medal but came back with a girlfriend. <laughs> so it was definitely something that wasn't expected. I think we have a really nice dynamic to have a partner who does exactly the same thing that you do. They understand the workload and commitment that's involved in going to these events, becoming a, an Olympian or a Paralympian. It's a 24-7 thing. I'm gonna hit the gym, okay. lift some weights. Crush it. See you later. See ya. Bye bye. <laughs> gotcha. Love you. Love you. Bye. Enjoy. When I was three years old, I contracted meningococcal disease with septicemia and gangrene. It's also known as meningitis, and they had to amputate both of my legs to save my life. And I also had four of my fingers amputated on my left hand, and I went completely deaf in my left ear. I was still only given less than 2% chance of living because it's a very progressive disease. A lot of people that get it don't really make it past the 24-hour mark. It's pretty much a miracle that I'm here today. When I was growing up, my bones wouldn't recognize that they had nothing to grow into. I do remember getting fitted with my first pair of prosthetic legs. For me, it was a little bit scary at first because I had to learn how to do everything again. My very first pair of prosthetic legs, they, they were quite heavy and they were quite stiff. They were kind of hard to walk around and I won't lie. Now the technology is amazing. I mean, my prosthetics are nice and light. They're comfortable. My ones that I use for training, then they're even lighter and they allow me to move freely. It was a bit difficult growing up when I was trying to get involved in sports because it was something that was foreign to them. They had never had an athlete before come to them that had a disability. There was multiple clubs that turned me away because they didn't want to have me there because you know, maybe I was a liability to them. I wish people would sometimes see us first as people rather than people who have disabilities. Hey. Hello. What is up? I have a coffee for you. <laughs> you better have a coffee for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the crack. From a very young age, I always knew that I was different from everybody else. It was something that happened at birth. It's called amniotic band syndrome, where the umbilical cord wrapped around my elbow restricted the blood flow, which therefore resulted in the stoppage of growth. I happened to live in a relatively rough estate, you could say. There was difficulties and challenges, getting involved in sporting settings, getting strange looks, people saying that you'll never be able to play basketball or you'll never be able to do this or that you look strange. They don't happen anymore, but they used to happen frequently. How was the gym? Good, yeah, wasn't too bad. Um, feeling good, feeling strong. Looking forward to getting back now, hopefully in competitions. In 2015, I became the first one-handed basketball player to ever represent their country nationally in the world. Obviously, it took a lot of hard work and dedication to achieve that goal. I was just so determined to be able to 
prove all the, the haters, I suppose, and doubters wrong and the people that just didn't believe in me because there was a lot of people that didn't believe in me at that point. People have asked us in the past if we were to have kids in the future if they would be missing their limbs because we are both missing our limbs. You get like like the holy people that like, they're like, God bless you, like. <laughs> God bless your spirit. Is your hand gonna grow back? No, uh, no, it's not gonna <laughs> grow back. It's a plant, man. They're like, oh, I'll pray for you. I'm like, I mean, thanks. But you should like, pray for yourselves, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. People just make assumptions that either myself or Maddie were good athletes simply just because of our disability in our category, but we're good athletes overall, full stop. Do you want to head away now? Yeah, let's go to the track, get warmed up. We train 12 times a week. It's our routine. We know what we have to do to try and be the best in the world. All right, guys, we'll get set up and we will get to it. You guys start jogging around and start warming up. So these prosthetics are my running blades and it kind of gives me what a real leg would feel like. My very first experience of helping out an athlete with a disability would have been Jordan. I had no background in coaching anybody that would have had to make adaptations or anything like that. Okay, so A skip. So get your toes up, toes up, toes up. Both of them would pride themselves as, as kind of representing parasport on a level playing pitch with able-bodied. So it's, it's quite inspiring to see they've all stopped having to do a double take. They're all used to her being there now. And I think a lot of them are quite honored that they'll see somebody who doesn't see barriers. My tattoo says, never say can't. And it's above one of my scars that I had from surgery when I first got meningitis. Mine are the Olympic rings, as you can see here in my left bicep, um, and the Paralympic symbol on my left pec. Only 0.001% of the entire population of the world get to become a Paralympian or Olympian, so um, I think it was only right to kind of acknowledge the achievement of getting there and by, by having it on my skin and, and with me for the rest of my life. With all the opportunities that this sport has given me. I wouldn't change it for the world. I mean, I got to meet Jordan because of this sport. Yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. I absolutely love it.